दिया आप लोगों का स्वागत करता है तो आज की वीडियो में हम लोग बात करने वाले हैं गवर्नमेंट जॉब से रिलेटेड टीजीटी और पीजीटी रिक्रूटमेंट की तो जैसे कि आप जानते हैं कि टीजीटी जो होता है वो उसकी जो फुल फॉर्म होती है फुल फॉर्म ऑफ पीजीटी उसकी होती है ट्रेंड ग्रेजुएट टीचर तो इसकी भर्ती निकली हुई है उससे रिलेटेड आपको मैं इस वीडियो में बताने वाला हूँ और वही पीजीटी और टीजीटी दोनों का निकला हुआ है फुल फॉर्म पीजीटी का अगर आप देख पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट टीचर टीजीटी और पीजीटी की रिक्रूटमेंट निकल के आई है उससे रिलेटेड इन्फॉर्मेशन आपको इस वीडियो में दी गई है वही इन्फॉर्मेशन आपको मैं आगे आने वाली वीडियो पे शेयर करने वाला हूँ और इसकी जो लैंग्वेज रहेगी वो रहेगी इंग्लिश में तो आई होप कि आपको ये वीडियो पसंद आएगी और उम्मीद करता हूँ की आप चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करके रखेंगे ऐसी मोर इन्फॉर्मेशन के लिए तो चलिए चलते हैं वीडियो की तरफ और जाने की कोशिश करते हैं Hi friends welcome to my channel I'm Arpita Karwa and in this video I'm going to talk about DSSB and KVS TGT PGT examination for the subject English so I know that a lot of you are asking about how to prepare what to study how to begin from where to start from so I'm going to answer all of these questions in this video I'm going to take you through the syllabus and the paper pattern and will exactly tell you the free resources that you can use in order to prepare for the huge syllabus and to crack this exam in the first attempt teaching is said to be one of the most prestigious and oldest profession and therefore if you look at the teachers you will find out that government teachers are in high demand so looking at the structure let me further clarify that in india teaching can be divided into two parts school level teaching and college level teaching so college or university level teaching can only be done by people who have cleared ugc net exam which is a national level test in order to become assistant professor or lecturer when it comes to school level teaching that is where tgt pgt comes into the play so school level teaching is further divided into three parts teaching grade 1 to 5 teaching grade 6 to 10th and teaching grade 11th and 12th so the teachers who are eligible to teach grade 1 to 5 has to clear exam called prt which stands for primary teacher the teachers who can teach grade 6 to 10th have to clear an exam called tgt that is trained graduate teacher and the teachers who can teach grade 11th and 12th are known as pgt teachers that stands for post graduate teachers all these three exam tgt pgt and prt are known as the teaching eligibility test in order to become teachers you must get a certificate that is known as teaching eligibility certificate now that you know the difference between tgt pgt and prt the next question that might pop inside your head would be that who conducts these exams so these teaching eligibility tests are conducted by state and central authorities namely in india there are three authorities which conducts these exams every year the first one being dssb which stands for delhi state service selection board then we have kvs which stands for kendriya vidyalay sangathan and then we have nvs which stands for navodaya vidyalay samiti so these are the three major boards that conducts these exams every year now that you know the basics about TGT PGT PRT examination it is time to look at the exam pattern and the syllabus so just like in case of UGC net exam there are two papers paper 1 and paper 2 paper 1 is a general paper which is common for everybody and paper 2 is a subject specific paper so if you want to become a teacher of history then your paper 1 would be a general paper that would be common for everybody irrespective of the subject they are appearing in and paper paper 2 would be history for you social finds for some other person english for some other person mathematics for some other person so the paper 2 subject keeps on changing dependent upon the area of specialization whereas the paper 1 course remains the same for everybody now let us look at the major topics that forms the part of the general paper so general paper consists of seven topics namely general english general hindi mathematics reasoning computers general knowledge and pedagogy so general english and general hindi are basically talking about the general grammar of these two languages it will have questions from antonyms synonyms 
uh, idioms, phrasal verbs, so all of that would be part of general English and general Hindi specifically. When it comes to mathematics, then you'll have questions from grade 6, 7th and 8th. So percentages, profit and loss, fractions, that kind of simple questions would be a part of mathematics. Reasoning ke questions are easy. Hote hai. You just need to go through any competitive exam uh, book for reasoning and you will get some general questions which are asked in all of these competitive exams. So the same set of questions are asked even in TGT, PGT exams. Then we have general knowledge from where can you study general knowledge? The only source is newspapers. So keep yourself updated. If in case you're not a newspaper lover, you can even skip this portion because general knowledge is a really, really vast subject and you cannot uh, complete it in like five or seven days. So if you're not so good with general knowledge and current affairs, you can even think about leaving this topic altogether. Apart from that, we have computers. So even in computers, you'll get general questions like what is a web browser? What is the difference between web browser and search engine? So all of these terminologies you must acquaint yourself with. And finally, we have pedagogy where they are going to ask questions about how teaching and learning takes place. So how a child learns that process is a part of pedagogy and only after knowing the process you will be able to understand a child's psychology and will be able to teach him better. So that forms the part of pedagogy. So this is all about paper one or general paper syllabus. You can study it from any market guidebook. You will find it readily available. Next week I'm coming up with a video on how you can master a guidebook in few days. So stay tuned to the channel. If you've not yet subscribed, subscribe it right now so that you don't miss out on that video. In that video, I'm going to clearly define how you can complete a guidebook and cover a syllabus in a very limited period. Now that we have touched upon the general paper, it is time to move on and look at the paper 2 syllabus for TGT PGT English. So as you all know that English comprises of a lot of writers from all over the world and when you look at the syllabus you might find it too much on the plate. There are so many writers and they've not listed the works of these writers that you must study. So you get confused as to how many works until how much should you uh, complete a particular writer. But let me tell you friends that if you are preparing for UGC net or if any of your friend is preparing for UGC net and you come across the syllabus of UGC net, you would be in utter shock because UGC net syllabus comprises of more than 2000 writers, whereas TGT PGT comprises of just some 50 60 writers. So the syllabus difference is too much. Yet I cannot deny the fact that those 50 60 writers must be understood must be read in detail because if you are looking at a writer like Shakespeare he has written more than 150 sonnets and more than 35 plays and reading each of that knowing what to read what to skip how to learn the characters is a big challenge in itself. So in this video, I'm going to streamline your preparation. I will tell you exactly how you should approach the syllabus and what should be the right method of studying all of these writers in a limited time. So if you look at the syllabus, you will find a lot of writers that they have listed down. In order to understand it better, I have divided these writers into five categories. So if you look at the world map, you will find that there are countries all over the world where there have been writers who have written some fabulous works in the field of English literature. And all those major writers are a part of TGT PGT exam. So the first important country is UK or what we know as Britain. So the first chunk of writers that you must study for TGT PGT would be coming from British literature. Britain I'm pretty sure you must be knowing is a very important and a very popular country of Europe. Next in line is America and the writers from that particular country. So America is a very important country we all know and it is an English speaking country and therefore a lot of great writers have written some fabulous works there. So American literature is the second segment that you must study for this exam. 
Next in line is India because even in India there have been great writers who have done some phenomenal work in the field of English literature like Rabin Tagore, Nazim Ezekiel, Toru Dat, and then we have Anita Desai. So all of these writers we would be approaching in Indian literature. Now if you look at the world map after this you will find that we have completely discussed three countries Britain, America and India but there are a lot of other countries except these three which will be categorized under two categories so one is European literature which consists of all the countries and the writers who are writing in Europe so Europe ke humne sirf ek country ki baat kari alag se that is Britain or UK now Except Britain, there are a lot of other countries like Italy, Germany, France, Spain. Writers from those areas are uh, included in European literature. And what about the rest of the countries in the world? All of them are included in post-colonial literature. What is post-colonial literature? We all know that Britain and other countries of Europe colonized various countries like India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Caribbean islands, then Canada. So all of those countries which were colonized by Britain or other European nations are categorized as post-colonial countries and the literature produced there is known as post-colonial literature. So if you look at the syllabus that you must be studying for PGT-TTT, it is going to fall under either of these five modules. So you will be studying British literature, you would be studying American literature, you would be studying Indian literature, European literature and post-colonial literature. And all these writers are explained in our online course. You can go to our website arpitakarva.com and free of cost you will get a list of all these writers in our course syllabus page so on that particular page you will find all these writers uh, they are available free of cost you can jot the major ones down and start your preparation this syllabus division categorization will help you a lot to approach writers from every country and study them in a sequence Another important division that you must do before you start preparing is the age-wise classification of the writers. For example, if you look at British literature, so British literature somewhat for TGT PGT begins around the Elizabethan period where you have writers like William Shakespeare, John Donne, and then after Elizabethan period comes the Enlightenment period where you have writers like Alexander Pope and novelists like Jonathan Swift who have written some famous novels like Gulliver Travels. And then after that Elizabethan and Enlightenment period you come to the Romantics. In Romantics you have poets like Wordsworth, Shelley, Keats, Byron. All of them were talking about nature, how by being connected to nature we can you know lose track of the uh, problems that we are facing in a normal day to day setup and their, po pro their poems are centered on nature and the aspects of uh, country life. Just after that comes another age which is Victorian period where industrialization started. So we had writers like Charles Dickens writing Hard Times and Oliver Twist talking about the ill effects of industrialization. Right after that there is a period called Modern Age where you have writers like Virginia Woolf, George Orwell, T.S. Eliot writing about the modern man who is shattered, who is uh, looking for solace, peace in this disturbed world and then there are works like 1984, Animal Farm which talks about how a modern man has fallen down to a very very pathetic state and finally we have the postmodern period where we have great writers and dramatics like Samuel Beckett talking about the dilemmas of post World War II. So this is how the literature must be studied, only then it is going to make sense. All this categorization is available on my web website. You can go through the website, make a list of all the important writers that you must study and then you can begin your preparation. This I think would help you to know what exactly should you study every day. Because if you look at the TGT PGT syllabus and if you've not been a very very optimistic student then you might find it very difficult to complete in one go and therefore this categorization in countries and based on the ages will help you 
to understand and channelize your preparation. So I hope this video uh, becomes useful in your TGT PGT preparation. If you have any questions, any doubt related to TGT PGT or any other exams related to English literature, feel free to contact on the WhatsApp number displayed there. You can even give us a call on the number uh, displayed on the screen. Apart from that, don't forget to follow us on the social media platforms to receive latest updates about the uh, exams conducted all over India related to the field of teaching. And with that note, I would like to take your leave. I'll meet you very soon with my next video. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpatakarva.com. <laughs>